Hi, welcome to another episode of Webcam Sessions. This week we're going to talk about how you don't always fret chords the same way. It often depends on where you came from and where you're going to dictate which finger should be used for what chord. So to start with this, let's go ahead and take a look at an A minor, which is just normally taught as your middle finger here on the second fret of the G string. That's all there is to an A minor. Well, oftentimes it's taught this way because it's very efficient, especially when you come from like an F chord or going to an F chord, because all that you have to do is take this index finger and place it on the first fret of the E string, right? No problem. But the problem arises when you go to like a G chord, for instance. So if I'm here at A minor and then I go to G, well, my G is going to go index finger here to two on the C, ring finger here on three of the E, and middle here on two of the A, right? That's a big leap to go from that middle finger here to all three fingers sort of pivoting. So a recommendation there is if you're on an A minor chord and going to a G, or you're at a G and going to an A minor, instead of having that middle finger cross all the way up like this, just take that index finger and move it up to the second fret of the G string and remove the others. So essentially, all that you're doing is using your index finger instead of your middle finger here on that A minor. And all of a sudden, just that transition of A minor to G becomes much easier because I'm not having to move every single finger into different positions, right? Now, A minor is a very easy chord, so this is not the best example from the standpoint of people usually don't struggle going from A minor to G. Even though this does make it a little bit more efficient, it's one of those things that might not need the efficiency. My favorite example that could really use it is something like a G to E minor chord. So if we play our G and we play it like we just were playing it a moment ago, and then we go to an E minor, oftentimes what happens here is our index finger comes down the second fret of the A string, middle finger here on the third fret of the E, and ring finger here to the fourth fret of the C. So when I do this, I'm pretty much moving every single finger to a different place, aren't I, right? The ring finger is coming up, the next finger is going down, and the middle finger is coming up. That's a lot of movement for that switch. So when I'm going back and forth between these two chords, it's a lot of movement. So there's two different approaches that we can take to make this transition easier. The first one is just the addition of a finger. Because when we play this G chord here, the real only difference between this G and this E minor in terms of the strings that are fretted, we'll see the three and the two are fretted no matter which way we play it, right? It's just the two on the C string needs to become a four. And so what you can actually do is just play your G chord, take your pinky finger and stretch it up over to the fourth fret of the C string. Now when you do this, even though this finger doesn't need to be there anymore, because you were just playing a G chord, by leaving it there and adding the pinky, you're now playing an E minor chord by only adding a single finger instead of switching the position of all three. If you listen, it sounds exactly the same. But it's much, much easier just to have that pinky come on to four than it is to reposition all three fingers. Even though this looks wrong, right? No one would really teach you to play an E minor this way. If you're coming from a G chord or going to a G chord, oftentimes this is much easier because it allows you to build the chord and manipulate it to whatever the next chord is, right? There's another way to do this that's kind of neat. Instead of playing your G chord with all three fingers like this, you can actually bar across the second fret on the C, E, and A strings and add the middle finger here on the third fret of the E. This is still the same chord shape, only now I'm using two fingers to play it instead of three. This way of playing it can make your E minor a lot easier too because you switch to your E minor, normally you would do this, which is great because I'm only moving two fingers, but I don't even need to move this finger. I can leave this finger barred there and just add the ring finger. Even though this bar is doing nothing, it's really just fretting this one string, it doesn't matter because it's less motion. I need it for the G chord. When I play the E minor, I can just add that single finger. And if you listen to that, again, sounds exactly the same. Right? Or the other way we worked on. They all sound the same, right? And even though in a vacuum, 
this chord is easier than this one or than this one, in you know, perspective, the other two can be much easier when you're playing a G chord. And that's kind of the point to today's lesson and, and session is we don't want to look at a chord as this is the way I play it every single time, like E minor, I play it like this. Sometimes it helps to think, well, what am I playing before or what am I playing afterwards and can I help set up the position to make it easier on that transition? And even though it might seem more difficult in a vacuum, in isolation, like this shape here, it might end up being much easier for when you're playing it in a song and trying to make those transitions very quick. So whenever you're struggling with a chord progression and you're not quite sure why this chord to this chord is so difficult, take a look at how much your fingers have to move and see maybe there's an easier way to manipulate those chords together to make the transitions easier. I'll see you guys next week for another episode of Webcam Sessions. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and have a great week.